I'm drawing her chair without her in it. I'm drawing the indentations she's left behind, the warm patches on the arms where she held her precious remote control, the stain on the antimacassar from her hair rubbing. Her little leather footstool has a shiny patina where her feet used to rest. There's rings on the occasional table where she put her cup. I'm wasting my time, really. I'll be better with my camera. They're not things you can capture with a pencil. I've already taken photographs of her slippers, lying there at the foot of the stairs next to the hot water bottle I gave her. I got right up close to them, looked right inside them. It's the dints and dents I'm interested in, the marks she's left on this world the space she created that no longer fills. It's very quiet. Usually I can't think straight in this house for all her rattling on, her pointed questions, her helpful advice, her little digs. We all make mistakes, don't we? Parents these days. A boyfriend, that's what you need. Now all that's stopped. It's just silence. And, well, it's awful to say, but it's a blessed relief. It really is. I'm free for the first time. Really free. Like I hadn't been since I first went to London. That doesn't excuse what I did. I know that. But if someone is just hanging on and waiting to die, and their only function in life seems to be, well, to make somebody else miserable, and if their dying can bring some happiness ease some suffering somewhere, I'm not going to feel too bad. I examine the Newell Post knob, the varnish still looking new on one side but worn away on the other, letting the grain show through. Mother's hand sliding over it. How many times? 10,000? 100,000? Now, I don't feel bad about what I did. But if I could have done it without her knowing, that would have been better. From the top of the stairs, I can get a good perspective shot down the banister onto the tiled floor. It was the impact with those tiles that did it, the doctor said. If she'd had carpet or even boards, it might have been a different story, apparently. Head over heels, she went. Heels over head, actually. Base over apex. Then smash. The back of her head hit the floor and the lights went out. Of course, I took advantage of her blindness. That doesn't seem fair either. She had good hearing, though. That you, Pauline? She said. Amazing, really. I hadn't moved a muscle. I was just standing here at the top of the stairs waiting for her. It must have been my breathing, she heard, I suppose, but she kept coming. Yes. I said, that's what I feel bad about. There was no need for that. Yes, mother, it's only me. Shove. I sit down on the top step. I'm so tired. I can't shed a tear, but I do put my face in my hands, let my body give a little judder of sadness. Hang on. Who's this? There's somebody at the door. I can see the shadow of them through the frosted glass. They ring the bell. It doesn't work. If they were a regular visit, visitor, they'd know that. My heart starts racing. They knock. Oh, they'd better not have revived her. I'd be in trouble then. No. I can see who it is. She's been around before. I'm not answering the door to her again. She said she got the address from some agency. Said she was looking for her birth mother. Said she'd be given a name. She said her mother was Pauline Copley. I laughed in her face. What a pathetic trick. She's not my Nancy. My little Nancy wouldn't look like that. Such a mess. Frizzy hair. Biting her lip and scratching at her hands. Nancy had something more about her than that. 
Whoever this woman is, she's not mine. Con merchant, I reckon. Trying to get my cash. And even if she was what she says, even if she was my flesh and blood, what good could ever come of it? Does she think she wants to get to know me? Make up for lost time and become bosom buddies? <laughs> She'd be sorry. Imagine the disappointment. Thirty odd years of waiting, dreaming about your fairy birth mother and you get me. I look down at the slippers and hot water bottle still lying there at the foot of the stairs, but I can't move from where I am at the top of the stairs. I'm frozen. That woman, she's still there, standing in the rain just the other side of the door. I want to scream at her to leave me alone, but I can't. I would have recognised her if she'd been my daughter. I knew every part of Nancy's face so well. Every curve, the sweep of the cheek, the cupid's bow, those long eyelashes, the turn of the nose. I knew that face better than any mother has ever known their baby's face. I remember looking at her and knowing it couldn't be her. I looked at her eyes. They weren't blue like Nancy's. She didn't have the same smooth skin that I remembered, that's for sure. She'd smoked the youth out of it, picked her spots, squeezed her blackheads and scrubbed cheap soap into the cracks and pores. She's knocking again, trying to look through the glass. She's persistent, I'll give her that. She's been back here three times, so who knows? Maybe she really is the fruit of my withered womb, and God help her if she is, but I'm having nothing to do with her. The cord was cut by the doctors, and then cut again by mother. And now it's staying cut. Of course, all my crowd, my bohemian set, they thought it was the coolest thing. They'd all help, yeah. They'd be glad to have her at their studios. A few hours here, a few hours there. Of course they'd help out. Of course they wouldn't get bored of me. They'd bring the booze round to mine if I couldn't come out to them. They were the best crowd of friends a girl in trouble ever had until the little thing actually arrived and immediately started crying. From that point on, she demanded and she cried. She demanded and she cried and then demanded some more. She cried until she was exhausted and she demanded that I be exhausted too. And who really wants one of them in their studio? Who really wants a night out in that flat with that going on when there's paintings to be painted? When there are pubs full of conversations to be had? When there's a city full of young, interesting people doing and saying all kinds of interesting things? Who wants to be helping out with a screaming baby then? No one, it turned out. So I left college and surprise, surprised mother. One winter's evening, straight off the train. Here I am and here's my shameful secret. The return of the prodigal daughter, you might say. No fatted calf though, not even a skinny one. She gave me absolute hell on a handkerchief. I was a slut and a whore and a dirty, stupid little trollop and that was all fine because that was what I expected. But blimey O'Reilly, 30 years later and she's still going on about my little mistake. It never stopped. Not until last night, anyway. It was mother that said I couldn't cope. It was her that phoned the council, or the agency, or whatever it was. And when the day came, it was her that took Nancy out of my arms and handed her over to the woman at the door. Oh, mother, how could you have done that? She knocks again, then turns and walks away. I go into the front bedroom and watch her leave. She looks back at the house. She even looks upstairs, but she doesn't see me. Maybe it is her. And so what if it is? I'm free now. I'm not getting rid of one burden to pick up another. Mother's gone and Nancy's gone. And neither one is coming back as far as I'm concerned. I look around Mother's room, the dressing table with no mirror, 
the special alarm clock that talks, the old bedspread. I see the pillow she's had for the last God knows how many years, the big yellow hollow in it. I take a photograph. I go around the other side and take some more. The space she created but no longer fills. I know it's daft, but I can't help it. I feel so heavy, so tired. I pull back the covers and climb in. They're heavy covers. Good, heavy, old-fashioned covers and a good eider down over the top. She was never one for a duvet. Oh, and the pressure of them feels so comforting, I can see why. I put my head in the space she made in the pillow. I can smell her. I'm sorry, Mother. I can't raise a tear, though. Like when they took my Nancy away, I never cried then, either. I just went back to my drawings, my hundreds of drawings. Her face, her face, again and again. The corners of her eyes, the bridge of that tiny nose, the rosebud lips, the chin. Hours and hours of work, metres of pencil lead. I just went through them once, then put them away and felt better. That's what I'll do tonight. Dig out all my pictures of Mother. The hands, the eyes, the hands again, the blind eyes again. I'll go through them, one by one, tick them off in my head. I'll kiss her goodbye and that'll be that. Freedom.